Peace and blessings to the 12 tribes of Israel. Today I'm going to deal with a topic called the prophetesses or prophetess. Okay, so we're going to deal with um, the role of women in terms of the gospel, in terms of leadership in the gospel, in terms of the church. Okay, because these days we have a lot of women preachers and we have a lot of prophetesses who go into churches and they prophesy and you know they're very loud and they scream and screech and you know and basically do what the men do in these churches okay uh, so we're just going to go through prophetesses and what the bible says about them and we're going to go through um well uh, the some of the prophecies prophetesses in the bible to see what the characteristics as written in the bible what the characteristics of their role is in terms of um, the most high okay so first of all let's go to um, Ezekiel 34 31 so we're going to go and define who is supposed to be in leadership in Israel so we're going to go to Ezekiel 34 and we are reading 31 okay so Ezekiel 34 31 Ezekiel 34, 31. And ye, my flock, the flock of my pasture, are men, and I am your God, said the Lord God. Okay, so the Lord is saying that the flock of his pasture are men. So men make up the 144,000, which are the leadership of, which will be the leadership of Israel in the kingdom to come. And on, here on earth, the Lord sends men in leadership okay because he said the flock of his pasture are men so the lord is dealing with men okay christ is the head of man okay so let's now go to amos 3 7 surely the lord god god will do nothing but he reveal it his secret unto his servants the prophets okay so the lord reveals his thinking his what he's going to do to his prophets okay his prophets are men so generally uh, the most high uses men as prophets okay unless it's exceptional circumstances then he would use a prophetess but generally the most high's prophets are men that's why it says prophet right because it's masculine okay okay so let's now go to the order in the bible in the new testament bible to see if it has been changed so we're going to go to first timothy 2 so we're first going to go to first timothy 2 and then we will go to timothy 3 okay so we're reading first timothy 2 and we are reading 10 to 11 but which become it women professing godliness with good works, right? Let the woman learn in silence with all subjection. But I suffer not a woman to teach nor to usurp the authority over the man, but to be in silence. For Adam was formed first, then Eve, and Adam was not deceived. But the woman being deceived was in a transgression. Notwithstanding, she shall be saved in childbearing if they continue in faith and charity, holiness with sobriety. OK, so it's telling us that uh, a woman should should do the good works. Yes, yeah, she should become professing godliness and good works It's the good works of Christ. Right. So everything that Christ authorize the woman to do is what she should be doing okay which is the good works um it says uh let the woman learn in silence with all subjection but i suffer not a woman to teach nor to usurp the authority over the man but to be in silence so she's not to usurp the authority of the man okay so she should be in a sub submissive position to the man but I suffer not a woman to teach. A woman is not supposed to teach, nor to usurp the authority of the man, but to be in silence. So she's supposed to listen to the man's leadership and be a follower. For Adam was formed first, then Eve, and Adam was was not deceived. But the woman being deceived was in the transgression. So Adam was not deceived. The woman was deceived as the weaker vessel. 
right? Notwithstanding, she shall be saved. So the woman will be saved in childbearing. So if she bears children, she will be saved doing that. If they continue in faith and in charity, meaning the good works, uh, love and holiness with sobriety. OK, so she's supposed to be holy and she's supposed to be in her full mind. So she's not supposed to be a drunkard. She's not supposed to be a drug taker. She's not supposed to be an idolater. She's supposed to be in her right mind. OK, that's what sobriety means. OK, so that's what a woman is supposed to do. So that's pretty much the standard of the role of the woman. So let's now go to let's now deal with the leadership structures in the new testament so let's go to first timothy three and we will read yeah and we'll read from one to six this is true saying if a man desire the office of a bishop he desired a good work so it's a good work being a bishop right a bishop then must be blameless the husband of one wife so it's a man so a man who has who who has a who has a wife yeah and he, he he's only supposed to have one wife vigilant sober of good behavior given to hospitality apt to teach not given to wine nor striker nor greedy of the filthy lucre but patient not a brawler not covetous one that rule at his own house so here we hear that it's a man okay so he has to rule his own house so men rule their house okay Having his children in subjection with all gravity. So his children are supposed to be in subjection to him and he is supposed to be in control of his own house. But if a man know not how to rule his own house, how shall he take care of the, ch the church of God? Right. So he has supposed a man in general is supposed to rule his own house, not a woman. OK, not a novice, least he being lifted up with pride, he fall into the condemnation of the devil. OK, so it, it is not supposed to be someone who's new in the faith, but someone who is seasoned in the faith, who's been in there for a while and who's mature enough to handle leadership. OK, so let's now deal with because we, we have two sets of leadership. So in the old um covenant we had captains we had judges in israel and there was captains and there were officers and obviously you had the leadership you have the government right but in the new testament we have bishops and deacons which is the role that you have in israel okay so let's now deal with the deacons so in order to do the deacons we are going to go to 12 and we're going to read from 12 to 13. Let the deacons be the husbands of one wife, ruling their children and their own houses well. For they have used the office of deacon well purchased to themselves, a good degree, a good degree and great boldness in the faith which is in Christ Jesus. OK, so we will we'll leave that one there. OK, so so again, we hear that it is a man. In fact, let's read 10. Uh, and let these also first be proved, then let them use the office of a deacon being found blame blameless. Even so must their wives be grave, not slanderers, sober, faithful in all things. Let the deacons be the husbands of one wife, ruling their children and their houses well. So again, it just reiterates that it is a man. So a, de a position of a deacon and the position of a bishop are men that rule their houses well okay so let's now go to titus and we are going to solid solidify that men are supposed to be teachers they're supposed to be in the leaders in israel in terms of the gospel okay uh so we're in titus and we're going to read one so it's titus one we're reading from five to ten for this cause left i thee in crete that thou should have set in order the things that are wanting and ordain elders in every city as I had appointed thee. OK, so the elders are the bishops and the deacons. If any be blameless, the husband of one wife, having faithful children, not accused of a riot or unruly, for a bishop must be blameless as the steward of God, not self-willed, not soon angry, not given to wine, nor striker, nor given to filthy lucre, but a love of hospitality, a love of good men sober, just, holy, temperate, 
holding fast the faithful word as he hath been taught, that he may be able by sound doctrine both to exalt and to convince the gays the gay sayers, the gainsayers, for there are many unruly and vain talkers and deceivers, especially they of the circumcision. So what we want to take from that is that Paul is reiterating that it's a man, right? Blameless, the husband of one wife. So a man is supposed to be blameless, the husband of one wife, and having faithful children, not accused of a riot or unruly. So he's supposed to be in charge of his own household. Okay, full control of his own household. So let's now go to 2, Titus 2, and we're going to read the rest. So we're going to read from 1 to 5. The aged men be sober, grave, grave means respectable, temperate, sound in faith, in charity, and in patience. Okay, so that's the older men. Okay, the older women, likewise, they be in behavior as becoming holiness, not false accusers, not giving too much wine, teachers of good things. They that may teach the young women to be sober, to love their husbands, to love their children. So they are supposed to teach the young women how to love their husbands and how to be sober and how to love their children. Okay, five, to be discreet, chaste, keepers at home. So uh, the younger women are supposed to be discreet. It means quiet spirited, not going around gossiping and being loud mouth, loud mouthed or just loud and boisterous, masculine and not supposed to be that. They're supposed to be feminine and it's supposed to be, as the Bible says, shame faced in a quiet spirit, discreet, chaste, meaning pure, keepers at home, meaning they're supposed to be ordering the home. OK, so when they're at home, they're supposed to be managing the home for their husbands good obedient to their own husbands that the word of god be not blasphemed okay and the young men likewise result to be sober like-minded okay so it goes on talking about something else but what, what we want to take from that is the order has not changed okay so let's now deal with the prophetesses okay so we're going to go to second kings and we're going to read from uh, chapter 22 and we'll read 14 to 20 so we're going to do a fair bit of reading today so it's second kings 22 14 to 20 okay so we are dealing with um prophetess um helda so it's prophetess helda okay so we're going to read a bit about her and then as we read we'll kind of go backtrack a bit and then we'll explain a bit okay so let's first go to in fact let's read from second kings and we'll read 22 3 and it came to pass in the 18th year of king josiah that the king sent job shaphan the son of azaliah the son of machilam the scribe to the house of the lord saying go up to Hilkiah, the high priest that he May sum the silver which brought into the house of the Lord, which the keepers of the door have gathered of the people, and let them deliver it into the hand of the doers of the work that have oversight of the house of the Lord, and let them give it to the doers of the work which is in the house of the Lord to repair the breaches of the house. So let's skip down, okay, to 12. And the king commanded Helkiah, the priest, and Achim, the son of Chapan, and Achbar, the son of Michia, and Abhan, the scribe, and Asiya, a servant of the kings, saying, Go ye inquire of the Lord for me and for the people for all Judah concerning the words of this book that is found for great is wrath of the Lord that is kindled against us because of our fathers have not hearkened unto the words of the book to do according unto all that which is written concerning us okay so let's go on to the meat of it now so so alkia the, the priests and akim and akba and shaphan and asiya and asiya went unto halda the pre, uh, prophetess the wife of shaldom shalom the son of tikva the son of harshis keeper of the wardrobe now she dwelt in jerusalem in the college and they consume consu communed with her okay so they all went to see this prophetess okay called helda okay and she said unto them thus said the lord god of israel tell the man that sent you to to me 
Thus said the Lord, Behold, I will bring evil upon this place and upon the inhabitants thereof, even all the words of the book which the king of Judah heart read, because they have forsaken me and have burned incense unto other gods, that they might provoke me to anger with all the works of their hands. Therefore my wrath shall be kindled against this place and shall not be quenched. But to the king of Judea, which sent you to inquire of the Lord, thus shall ye say to him, thus said the Lord God of Israel, as touching the words which thou hast heard. Okay, so she's she's talking about the king Josiah. Okay, right, because he was he was the king of the kingdom of Judah. Okay, as touching the words which thou hast heard, because thine heart was tender, and thou hast humbled thyself before the Lord, when thou heardest what I spake against this place and against the inhabitants thereof, that they should become a desolation and a curse, and hast rent thy clothes and wept before me. I also have heard thee, said the Lord. Behold, therefore, I will gather thee unto thy fathers, and thou shalt be gathered into thy grave in peace, and thine eyes shall not see all the evil which I will bring upon this place. And they brought the king word again. Okay, so let's backtrack a bit. Okay, so let's backtrack a bit. So King Josiah, which is the king of Judah, he sent out Shap Shaphan to the high priest um, Hilkiah, right? And basically, Hilkiah, the high priest Hilkiah, just found the book of the law, right? Which proves that they weren't really following the law properly, okay? Because so so basically, Shaphan went back to speak to King Josiah, explaining him what was in the book, because he read the book, and then the king uh, wasn't very happy with what, what he heard that was in the book, which proves that they weren't really following the law, they weren't taking it seriously, because they saw the statutes and the commandments that they weren't really following, right? Because it says in 13, Go ye inquire of the Lord for me, and for the people, and for all Judah, concerning the words of this book, that it is found, for great is the wrath of the Lord, that is kindled against us because our fathers have not hearkened unto the words of this book to do according unto all that which is written concerning us. So it shows that they were not following the law up to that period. Right. And that book was lost, which proves that they weren't taking it that seriously. But jo Josea, um, all of a sudden started to he was told what was in the book. And therefore he now was like, wow, we're not even following like any of it you know so he now went to this prophetess called hilda right so the most high used the prophetess prophetess hilda to get josea back in line basically right and this prophetess it tells us that she was a married woman right let's read it uh hilda the prophetess the wife of shalom the son of tikva the son of harshis keeper of the wardrobe now she dwelt in jerusalem in the college and they communed with her right so she was a, a known prophetess and they went to speak to her and the lord used this woman used this prophetess to basically speak to king josiah and to say you and i'm paraphrasing here you must take it you must take it much more seriously than you have been yeah and more seriously than your forefathers have been taking it right so uh, the essential bits of the story is that the most high used a woman that was in subjection to her husband because it tells you that she was the wife of a particular husband right so she was in she was a woman a holy woman in line with the scripture so she was following the law that's why king josea um went sent his men to speak to her why because she was an upstanding woman who was following the law right and she and therefore the Lord used her, the most high used this woman to speak to the king so that he would change his ways. And just to add to uh, the story, um, it also proves that the high priest Elkia wasn't wasn't doing his job. He wasn't a real high priest. Right. So the man who is the high who was the high priest to uh, Judah was not really doing his job. OK, so that proves because if they weren't really upholding the book or the book of the law and the book of the law was was lost anyway. And then all of a sudden they found the book of the law and then that put the scare, the fear of the Lord into the King Josiah. 
um, then it proves that the high priest there wasn't doing his job. So therefore, the Most High used a holy woman, the holy woman of Israel, to uh, push the men, right, to do their jobs. Okay, so he, the Most High looked around for someone who was holy and he found the holy prophetess who was obeying the law and then he used her to get the other men, the men in, in leadership roles, to actually get their get themselves in shape. Okay, so let's read on a little bit. So it's Second Kings twenty three, and we're reading from one, uh, and we'll read all the way down to five. And the king sent, and they gathered unto him all the elders of Judah and Jerusalem. And the king went up into the house of the Lord, and all the men of Judah, and all the inhabitations inhabitants rather of Jerusalem with him and the priests and the prophets and all the people both small and great and he read in their ears all the words of the book of the covenant which was found in the house of the Lord okay so let's move down to four and the king commanded Helkiah the high priest and the priests of the second order and the keepers of the door to bring forth out of the temple of the Lord all the vessels that were made for Baal and for the groove and for all the hosts of heaven and he burned them without Jerusalem in the fields in the fields of Kidron and carried the ashes of them into Bethel and he put down the idolatrous priests whom the kings of Judah had ordained to burn incest in the high places in the cities of Judah and in places round about Jerusalem them also that burned incest unto Baal to the sun and to the moon and to the planets and to all the hosts of heaven okay so that story goes on but the central thing that we want to take from that is that the most high use the prophetess to get the men in leadership roles to do what they were needed to do so the most high would use anybody to get his job done okay okay so just to buttress the point um, nowhere there does it say that she was leading a congregation and she was usurping the authority of men and she was teaching men. Nowhere there did it say that she was a leader of men. No, the Lord just simply used her because Israel was was bogged down in idolatry. They were worshipping Baal and they had no time for the, for the book of the law. They had no time for the most high statutes and commandments and Israel was failing the most high and the most high used the prophetess um, who who was in order because she was under the authority of her husband. She was subjected to her husband and she was in order and she was a holy woman. And the most high used her to actually uh, to, to get the King Josea to clean up the act of Israel at that particular point. So let's now go to Hannah, the prophetess. So we're going to go to Luke 2 and we're going to read from 36 to 35. So it's Luke 2, reading from 36 to 35. And there was one Anna, a prophetess, the daughter of Phanuel, of the tribe of Usher. She was of a, of a great age and had lived with a hundred with a husband seven years from her virginity and she was a widow of about four score and four years so she was 84 which departed not from the temple but served god with fasting and prayers night and day so that it that is one of the characteristics of a prophetess which is to fast and pray okay so when you fast and you pray and the lord sees your heart and your heart is in the right place he you're now open yourself to hear from him okay as long as it's in line with the bible okay so let's read on and she and she coming in that instant gave thanks likewise unto unto the lord and spoke of him to all them that looked for redemption in, in jerusalem and when they had performed all the things according to the law of the lord they returned into galilee to their own city of nazareth so everything was done according to the law so an important thing to get from that is that she was uh, a prophetess in line with the law. Right. So everything was performed. All things were performed according to the law of the Lord. And her job was to fast and pray night and day. And whereas she was not married at the time, she what she had been married 
um, for a very long time. Okay, but she was an elder. And she was 84 years old. Right. So let's now go to let's now deal with Deborah. Okay, so we're going to briefly deal with Deborah. So let's go to Second Kings four. Okay, so we're reading Judges four. Okay, so we're going to read Judges four, and we'll read. We we'll just read bits bits of the chapter. Okay, just to get a feel of the characteristics of this prophet, which is Deborah. Okay, so let's read in from one. And the children of Israel again did evil in the sight of the Lord when Ehud was dead. Okay, so Ehud was a righteous man. He was a Benjamite. Okay, um, and he was a righteous leader. Okay, so when he died, uh, the children of Israel did evil in the sight of the Lord. Okay, and the Lord sold them into the hand of Jabin, king of Canaan. Sorry. And the Lord sold them into the hand of Jabin, king of Canaan, the, that reigned in Hazar, the captain of whose host was Caesarea, which dwelt in Haraseth of the Gentiles. Okay. So Sisera was one of the captains of the Canaan king which is Jabin okay and the children of Israel cried unto the Lord for he had 900 chariots of iron and 20 years he mightily oppressed the children of Israel okay so he was very harsh with Israel and Deborah a, pro a prophetess the wife of Lebedoth she judged Israel at that time and she dwelt under the palm tree of Deborah between Ramoth and Bethel in Mount Ephraim and the children of Israel came up to her for judgment, and she sent and called Barak, the son of Abinom, out of Kadesh, Naphtali, and said unto him, Hath not the Lord God of Israel commanded, saying, Go and, and draw towards Mount Tabor, and take with thee ten thousand men of the children of Naphtali and of the children of Zebulun? So she's asking the question to, to Barak. OK, you know, so she seems to know what the Lord has spoken to Barak about. OK, and I will draw unto thee to the river Kishon, Sisera, the captain of Jibin's army with his chariots and his multitude. And I will deliver him into thine hand. And Barak said unto her, if thou wouldst go with me, then I will go. But if thou wouldst not go with me, then I will not go. OK, so straight out the door, she's saying, the Lord has used her to prompt Barak to do what to go and see Sisera. OK, because so, he seems very reluctant, whether it was maybe he was scared or maybe he was just slothful. Maybe he was just lazy. OK, but either way, he didn't want to do it. OK. Um, so the Lord used her to get him to do it. OK, and she said, I will surely go with thee. So we read in verse number nine. Notwithstanding the journey that thou takest shall not be for thine honour, for the Lord shall sell Sisera into the hand of a woman. And Deborah arose and went with Barak to Kadesh. So she went with she went with Barak to Kadesh and Barak called Zebulun and Naphtali to Kadesh. And he went up with 10,000 men at his feet and Deborah went up with him. Now Heber the, the Canaanite, which was of the children of Habab, the father-in-law of Moses, had severed himself from the Canaanites, from the Canaanites, and pitched his tent onto the plain of Zanam, which is of Kadesh. And they showed Sisera that Barak, the son of Abinon, was gone up to Mount Tabar. And Sisera gathered together all his chariots, even eight hundred chariots of iron, and all the people that were with him from Harasheth of the Gentiles unto the river Kishon. But Deborah said unto Barak, Up, for this is the day in which the Lord hath delivered Sisera into thine hand. Is not the Lord gone out before thee? So Barak went down from the Mount Tabar, and ten thousand men after him. Okay, so Deborah is pretty much uh like his um 
is his encourager. <laughs> so she she's hearing from God and she's encouraging him to do it. OK, to do what the Lord has already asked him to do. And the Lord discomfited Sisera and all his chariots and all his hosts with the edge of the sword before Barak. So the Sisera lighted down off his chariot and fled away on his feet. But Barak pursued after the chariots and after the hosts unto Harashath of the Gentiles. And all the hosts of Sisera fell upon the edge of the sword and there was none a man left. OK, so there was not a man left. So they were all killed. OK, how be it Sisera fled away on his feet to the tent of Jal, the wife of Harbor, the Canaanite, for there was peace between Jabin, the king of Hazar and the house of Heba, the Canaanite and Jal. Jal was a woman, right? And Jal went out to meet Sisera and said unto him, turn in, my lord, turn in to me, fear not. And when he had turned in. In unto her into the tent, she covered him with a mantle. And he said unto her, Give me, I pray thee, a little water to drink, for I am thirsty. And she opened a bottle of milk and gave him drink and covered him. Again he said unto her, Stand in the door of the tent, and it shall be when any man do it come and inquire of thee and say, Is there any man here? Thou shalt say, No. So he's instructing her to say he's not there. 21. Then Jal, Haber's wife, took a nail of the tent and took a hammer in her hand and went softly unto him and smote the nail into his temples and fastened it into the ground. For he was so he was fast asleep and weary, so he died. OK, so she killed him. And behold, as Barak pursued Sisera, Jal came out to meet him and said unto him, Come, and I will show thee the man whom thou seekest. And when he came into her tent, behold, Sisera lay dead, and the nail was in his temples. So God subdued that day Jabin, the king of Canaan, before the children of Israel. And the hand of the children of Israel prospered and prevailed against Jabin, the king of Canaan, until they had destroyed Jabin, the king of Canaan. Okay, so important thing to take from that is that um, Deborah was used by the Most High to to get Barak off his backside basically okay so that's the important thing to take from that so let's backtrack a bit um, so we're going back to Judges 4.4 4, and Deborah a prophetess the wife of Libadoth so she was a married woman so she she was in subjection to her husband she judged Israel at the time and she dwelt under the palm tree of of Deborah between Ramah and Bethel in Mount Ephraim the children of Israel came up came up to her for judgment and she sent called Barak the son of okay all right so she was a judge and she was a judge but she was in subjection of her husband okay so that's the important thing to take from that and okay so just to purchase the just to extend that point um she was under the subjection of her husband um the the, the judges says that she did have a husband which shows that she would have been under the authority of her husband right so she wasn't like a she wasn't a leader of Israel. She wasn't proclaiming to be a governor of Israel or a, a, a queen of Israel or anything like that. Um, she and she wasn't usurping the authority of men. You know, the Most High simply used her to get Barak to get off his backside. I don't know. Maybe he was too lazy or maybe he was too scared. But either way, the Most High used her to get him off his backside okay now there's two more points that i need to point out because if you read further in in, in judges 5 um, 9 it does say my heart is towards the governors of israel that offered themselves willingly among the people bless ye the lord so deborah was an upstanding woman she was a woman that followed the law and she was a woman in order okay and she is saying that her heart is towards the governors of Israel. So she was under the authority of the men of Israel. Okay, that's why that's why it's there in the scriptures. Okay. And let's drop down now to Judges 5:12, where it says, Awake, awake, Deborah, 
Awake, awake, utter a song. Arise, Barak, and lead thy captivity captive, thy son of Abinam. Okay, so it's saying, awake, awake, Deborah. Awake, awake, utter a song. Arise, Barak, and lead thy captivity captive, thy son of Abinam. Okay, so it's saying that Barak will leave the captivity. Okay, so it wasn't Deborah that led it. It was Barak that led it. Okay, uh, so Deborah didn't lay claims on the fact that she led the captivity it was the man that did it okay now let's skip down from judges 5 to judges 5 24 blessed above women shall joel the wife of heba the canite be blessed shall she be above women in the tent okay because remember joel she killed sisera okay so it let's read it again blessed above women shall joel the wife of heba the canite B, blessed shall she be above women in the tent. So it's saying that she will be blessed above women in the tent. So it's not saying above men in the tent or above all Israelites in the tent because she was she did a hero, a, 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 something that a hero would do. You know, <laughs> it's saying that she'll be blessed above women in the tent. So it again, it wasn't she Joel wasn't kind of putting herself outside of the order of men being leaders and her being the new leader in Israel or the new hero in Israel, there, thereby diluting the authority of the governors of Israel or the men of Israel. Okay. Okay, so now we're going to look at another prophetess and we're going to go all the way to Exodus 15 and her name is Miriam. So we're going to look at Miriam the prophetess. Okay, so we're reading Exodus fifteen twenty, And Miriam, the prophetess, the sister of Aaron, took a timbrel in her hand, and all the women went out after her with timbrels and with dances. Okay, so women can lead other women. Okay, and a woman can usurp the authority of of other women okay so an uh, so an older woman can usurp the authority of a younger woman okay but a woman is not supposed to usurp the authority of a man but a woman is not supposed to usurp the authority of a man especially her husband yeah so she was a leader of women right Let's read it again. The Mary and the prophetess, the sister of Aaron, took a timbrel in her hand and all the women went out after her with timbrels and with dances. And Miriam answered them, Sing ye to the Lord, for he hath triumphed gloriously. The horse and his rider heart he thrown into the sea. So Moses brought Israel from the Red Sea, and they went out into the wilderness of Sheer, and they went three days in the wilderness and found no water. Okay, so an important thing to take from that is uh, when the Most High overthrew the or killed the Egyptians as they were following Moses and, and the Israelites and our people through the Red Sea, he killed them all, right? So he opened up the sea and then as they, and, and they, he, he closed up the sea as they were coming through the sea, okay? So that's what she was so happy about. OK, so let's now go to let's now deal with Miriam in numbers. So we're going to go to numbers 12. So we're reading numbers 12 and we're going to deal a little bit deeper into Miriam. OK, and Miriam and Aaron spoke against Moses because of the Ethiopian woman whom he had married for. He had married an Ethiopian woman. Now, um, I've done a video on this. And I, it's my belief that the Ethiopian woman was actually an Israelite woman. Okay, so it was an Israelite woman that was based in the Median, which was in the, the Ethiopian region. Okay. But anyhow, let's carry on. And they said, Heart the Lord indeed spoke, spoken only by Moses. Heart he not spoken also by us. And the Lord heard it. Okay, so Miriam was complaining. All right. And she's saying, Oh, Moses, why is the Lord? It, why is the Lord only spoken to Moses? And is he only really spoken to Moses? Have he not spoken to also to us? 
and the Lord heard it. Now the man Moses was very meek above all the men which were upon the face of the earth. And the Lord spake suddenly unto Moses and unto Aaron and unto Miriam, Come out ye three unto the tabernacle of the congregation. And they three came out. Okay, so the Lord came down and spoke. And the Lord came down in a pillar of cloud. Right, so he's, he's spoken um, from from above and then he came down in a pillar of, of the cloud. OK, so a chariot or UFO and stood in the door of the tabernacle and called Arian and Miriam. And they both came forth and he said, hear now my words. If there be a prophet among you, I, the Lord, will make myself known unto him in a vision and I will speak unto him in a dream. So the Lord speaks to his prophets in vision, visions visions and dreams my servant Moses is not so who is faithful in all mine house okay so Moses was an exception with him will I speak mouth to mouth even apparently and not in dark speeches and the similitude of the Lord shall he behold wherefore then were ye not afraid to speak against my servant Moses and the anger of the Lord was kindled against them and he departed and the cloud departed from off the tabernacle and behold Miriam became leprous white as snow and Aaron looked upon Miriam and behold she was leprous okay so she was a black woman and she was turned white okay so when you're turning white it is called leprosy in the bible okay and Aaron said unto Moses Alas, my Lord, I beseech thee, lay not the sin upon us wherein we have done foolishly and wherein we have sinned. Let her not be as one dead of whom the flesh is half consumed when he cometh out of the mother's womb. And Moses cried unto the Lord, saying, Heal her now, O God, I beseech thee. So Moses is begging on behalf of Miriam. And the Lord said unto Moses, if her father had but spit in her face, should she not be ashamed seven days? Let her be shut out of the camp seven days. And after that, let her be received in again. And Miriam was shut out from the camp seven days and the people journeyed not till Miriam was brought in again. And afterward, the people removed from Azeroth and pitched in the wilderness of Paran. OK, so the important thing to take from that is that the Lord punished Miriam. So he put Miriam in her place as a woman prophetess. Okay. He didn't punish Aaron. Right. He punished Miriam because he, the Most High, wanted to, to teach the men, wanted to teach the, the, the women, especially the women, that you do not speak against men. You do not try to usurp the authority of men. You do not speak against a prophet. OK, who the Lord has ordained to be a prophet. OK, and I think there was other things going on there. The Lord did that for a specific purpose that she, he didn't want Miriam to start uh, thinking that she was in control of things, you know. And she, he didn't want Miriam to start anything within the, the nation to, def, to deface or to dilute the power or the leadership of Moses. Right. So the Lord had to come down and put the woman in her place, check her, you know, and he didn't he, noticeable that he didn't check Aaron. Right. <laughs> Aaron begged on her behalf. He checked the woman. Right. So the Lord is trying to say something here. A woman is not supposed to usurp the authority of a man and a woman should be in silence. So he, he put definitely put her in her place. So in terms of what the Most High did to the prophetess Miriam and he actually checked her. He came down and he checked her. So a man checking a woman. And what God was saying to Miriam was you stay in your place. You know, you close your mouth, stay in your position. Yeah. Just because you're a prophetess, it doesn't mean you're on the same level as Aaron and Moses, because that's why Aaron didn't get checked as much as Miriam did. And what the Most High did was that he cursed her. And when, when he cursed her, she went white as snow. She was a black woman and she turned white. And then she had to stay out of the camp for about seven days as punishment. So basically the Most High was trying to say that a woman is not supposed to usurp the authority of a man. So if you have a man leading a woman, she's not supposed to usurp his authority. And she's not supposed to be running her mouth and causing 
problems within the organization, within the relationship. So that was very unique and very profound. And that's why it's in the Bible. Go to let's now deal with Revelations 2. So we're going to deal with Revelations 2 and we'll read from 18 to 25. So we're going to read what the Lord is saying about prophetess. Okay, about the prophetesses. All right, so we're reading from 18. And unto the, the angel of the church in Thyatira, right? These things said the Son of God, who heart his eyes like unto a flame of fire and his feet like fine brass. So that's, that's Christ, right? I know thy works in charity, service and faith, and thy patience and thy works, and the last to be more than the first, right? So he's saying, mm, I, 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 I know your works and your patience and your charities and your service, notwithstanding I have a few things against thee, because thou sufferest that woman Jezebel, which call it herself a prophetess, to teach and to seduce my servants to commit fornication and to eat things sacrificed unto idols. Now, the fornication that it's talking about is idolatry okay so that's when you go against the most high okay so let's let's go to jeremiah 3 so that we get a feel of what the fornication is talking about one to two they say if a man put away his wife this is the most high speaking to the nation right if they say if a man put away his wife and she go from him and become another man's, shall he return unto her again? So the Most High is asking us, us this question. Shall not that land be greatly polluted? But thou hearts played the harlot with many lovers, yet return again to me, said the Lord. So if a man, so if a man has a wife, she commits uh, adultery and she comes back to him, you know, should he take her back? Now she's now effectively married to somebody else. Two, Lift up thine eyes unto the high places and see when thou hast not been laying with. In the ways hearts thou sat for them as the Arabian in the wilderness and thou hast polluted the land with thy whoredoms and thy wickedness. So the adultery that the Lord was talking about was them, was Israel worshipping other gods. It was the nation of Israel worshipping other gods. God. So let's go to 1820. In those days, the house of Judah shall walk with the house of Israel and they shall come together out of the land of the north to the land that I have given for an inheritance unto your fathers. So the land of the north is talking about it, the northern hemisphere. OK, 19. But I said, how shall I put thee among the children and give thee a pleasant land, a godly inheritance of the hosts of nations? And I said, thou shalt call me my father and shall not turn away from me surely as a wife treacherously departed from her husband so have ye dealt treacherously with me O house of israel said the lord so the most high is saying that he would he's prepared to accept israel back okay so that's so essentially because he says the house of judah and the house of israel so he's prepared to accept israel back into the land so back into his house basically okay so let's go back to Revelation. So it's talking about idolatry. OK, so let's read it again. Notwithstanding, I have a few things against thee because thou sufferest that woman Jezebel, which call it herself a prophetess to teach and to seduce my servants to commit fornication, which is idolatry, as in Jeremiah three, and to eat things sacrificed unto idols. So it actually does say it here. 21 and i gave her space to repent of her fornication and she repented not so fornication let me say this can also mean in the church okay in the mod in the in the church in general okay because people are worshiping the image of the beast which is caesar borgia which is esau's doctrine in the church that's what most christians are worshiping they are worshiping esau's doctrine or esau okay which is idolatry okay because they're not worshiping the truth they're not worshiping in spirit and in truth okay and i give her space to repent of her fornication and she repented not behold i will cast her into a bed and them that commit adultery with her into great tribulation except they repent of their deeds and i will kill her children meaning the followers with death and all the churches shall know that i am he which search it the realms and hearts, and I will give unto every one of you according to your works. Okay? 
But unto you I say, unto the rest in Thyatira, as many as have not this doctrine, and which have not known the depths of Satan as they speak, I will put upon you none other burden, but that which ye have already hold fast till I come. Okay? Now, we're going to read on, because this is a particular church. This was a real church at that time, but it's, it's systematic or it's symbolic of churches today. Okay? So he's really talking about churches today. Let's read on. Uh, first of all, he said, Hold fast till I come, and he that overcome it and keep it my works until the end to him which I give power over the nations. So he's talking to the to Israelites, okay? And he shall rule them with a rod of iron as a vessel of the potter. Shall they be broken to shivers, even as I received of my father. So he's, he's saying that us as Israelites uh, in the kingdom, when we get given our power again in our kingdom, we'll rule the nations with a rod of iron. Okay. And I will give him the morning star, meaning Christ. And he that heart, uh, a he heart and ear, let him hear what the spirit said unto the churches. Okay. So he's talking in general, but he's using a real church in Thyatira as a means of categorizing churches today. So any churches today with a prophetess that is behaving in a masculine way, who thinks that she's a woman preacher or pastor or bishop or deacon in, in puts herself in a leadership role in the church is not of God. And she really needs to repent because she's not really following the Bible. She's following another God. She's following idolatry, really. OK. OK, so let's summarize what we've learned from our Bible study or Bible share on prophetesses. There were primarily um, a role in the Old Testament, not so much the New Testament. Um, and they were women that were submissive to their husbands. They had a husband, so they were under the authority of their husband. And there were women that, were, that the Lord used. They were holy women that kept the law and the Lord used those women to um, encourage or to egg on the men in leadership roles to do what the Lord was asking them to do. OK. Also, what we've learned is that a woman who calls herself a prophetess is not supposed to usurp the authority of a man, because, as we know, um, the Most High himself came down and checked Miriam for speaking uh, in an unkind way about Moses and his wife and we know that that's the case because the Most High didn't check Aaron as much as he checked Miriam and Miriam a black woman was turned white and she was uh, banned from the church for the camp for about seven days so and also what we've learned in Revelations is that the Most High um, is very, doesn't really like prophetesses in the New Covenant. OK, He's, he does. He has a problem with people that call themselves prophetesses in the New Covenant, because I've, as I've been explaining in many of my videos on my channel, is that each generation, the morality of the generation gets worse. So it gets worse than the one before. So 20 years ago, things were not as bad as they are now. And then 20 years before that, things were not as bad as, as they were, you know, then. Um, so life in the 50s and 60s is definitely different to the life as we know it today. Morality has take, taken a dive. We know that marriages have less of a chance of survival. We know that people are not taking their roles in marriages. So therefore... Um, I believe that the Most High puts is putting the priority now on men leading, um, leading in the church, leading in the nation and leading in their households. Brothers and sisters, I hope you are supremely edified. Shalom.